This video will cover the basics you need to improve your overall bossing experience at any boss in the game. You do not need fancy gear or expensive abilities to take down bosses, you need a logical ability order. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you like all kinds of RuneScape content, be sure to subscribe. In this video, I'll be showcasing three different tiers of action bar per combat style. The first one assumes you only have one unlockable ability, the second assumes you have some other unlockable abilities, and the third assumes you've paid for some more expensive abilities. Here are some things that I suggest you unlock which are virtually free. Now, you don't need to unlock everything before you can even start doing PVM, but if you're going to unlock something before starting, I suggest unlocking the Sunshine and Death Swiftness abilities from the World Wakes quest. This quest literally only requires some combat gear and takes about 45 minutes using my guide, which I'll link in the description below. The other two things that I believe are critical to unlock are the Ring of Vigor and Adrenaline Potion, both of which have excellent synergy with the Sunshine, Death Swiftness and Berserk abilities, and will massively increase your damage output. When starting out, you will only need six basic abilities for your magic rotation. These will be the same for dual wield and two handed except for the first ability slot being your buffing basic. From left to right your basic abilities should be sonic, wave or concentrated blast depending on what type of weapon you're using, dragon breath, combust, chain, impact and rack. While both sonic wave and concentrated blast have less damage output than the second ability called dragon breath they do have a faster cooldown and either give your next hit more accuracy or a higher critical strike chance. You should be using these abilities as often as you can because of those buffs. For Concentrated Blast, it's worth mentioning that this is a channeled ability you wish to cancel out as soon as you can by using your next ability to maximize damage output. By cancelling out, I simply mean using an ability as soon as you can after activating Concentrated Blast itself. The third ability on the action bar is called Combust, and what's unique about this ability is that it's a bleed that deals damage over time. While the ability's damage isn't boosted by many things normal abilities are boosted by, by, like curses, it can deal major damage, especially if you move your target from the original position, as that will double the damage of the bleed. The other basics on the action bar are fairly straightforward, but it's worth pointing out that Chain can hit additional targets, which is useful for tagging minions during boss fights. As for filling in the rest of your action bar, use the following thresholds. Wild Magic, Asphyxiate, Smoke Tendrils, Detonate, and finally for your ultimate ability, Sunshine. If you do not have the Tender or Sunshine abilities unlocked, consider going back to my unlockable section of this video and completing the quest required. It will take you less than two hours to complete both. Now the Detonate ability is a little bit strange to use as you need to activate it once, charge it up to 100% which you can see in your buff bar, and then release it by tapping the keybind or clicking the ability again. You can speed up this process to make this threshold better for one-on-one -on -one fights by using Blast Diffusion Boots. Now that I've covered the basic action bars, I do want to mention some alternative action bars which you can use if you have additional abilities unlocked. If you have the Corruption Blast ability, which is an incredibly powerful AoE magic bleed, even on one-on-one -on -one targets, you're going to want to place it as your first ability in your action bar. This ability is unlocked by buying a Maz Capability Codex. If you have the Tusker's Wrath ability, place it after Combust on your bar. If you have the Sacrifice ability, you can use it to replace the Impact ability in your action bar. Finally, if you have the Guthic Staff unlock, you want to use that instead of Smoke Generals because it deals major damage and also applies a defense debuff for one minute on your target, improving your hit chance. If you're using the item as a switch, all you need to do is equip it, use the special, and then go back to your main magic weapon. In case you've unlocked the Greater Concentrated Blast magic ability, which is incredibly strong, you're going to place it as your second ability just like regular Concentrated Blast. Similarly to magic, you will only need six basic ranged abilities for your rotation. Later with Corruption Shot, this will become 7. These will be the same for dual wield and two-handed except for the first ability slot being your buffing basic. From left to right, your basic abilities should be Dazing Shot or Needle Strike, depending what type of weapon you're using, Snipe, Fragmentation Shot, Ricochet, Binding Shot, and Piercing Shot. While Dazing Shot will reduce your opponent's accuracy by 10% on the next hit, Needle Strike will actually increase your own ability damage on your next hit by 7%. So dual wield is very, very strong. The other ranged basic abilities are fairly straightforward, but it's worth pointing out that Snipe is an ability that hits hard, however requires to charge up. It's very easy to accidentally cancel out the animation by using a different ability early. An easy trick to avoid this is simply using your next ability after you see the physical arrow fly. Fragmentation Shot is a bleed which you can double the damage of while moving your target, much like Combust from Magic. Ricochet is similar to Chain where it will hit multiple targets if they are within range, which is great for tagging boss minions. 
Alternatively, another trick for doing AoE damage is by using mechanized enchompers with an offhand crossbow to turn all your attacks into AoE attacks. As for filling in the rest of your action bar, you want to use the following thresholds in this order. Snapshot, Rapid Fire, Shadow Tendrils, Bombardment, and then for your ultimate ability, of course, Death Swiftness. Now that I've covered the basic action bars, I do want to mention some alternative action bars which you can use if you have additional abilities unlocked. If you have the Corruption Shot ability, place it in front of your Needle Strike or Dazing Shot ability. If you have Tusker's Wrath, place it before Ricochet. If you have the Sacrifice ability, you can replace Binding Shot in case you want some small heals every now and then. They deal the same amount of damage. Finally, if you have Greater Ricochet, it's the first basic ability you want to use because it's by far the strongest ranged basic ability. The other thing you've seen change on this bar is that Dazing Shot has been replaced with Greater Dazing Shot, which is unlocked from the Shattered Worlds minigame by buying the Salt the Wound ability, but I will not go into detail about this because it's a little bit complex. The six main melee basic abilities you want to use are as follows. Fury, Decimate or Cleave depending on your dual wield or two-handed weapon, Dismember, Sever, Havoc or Smash, again depending on the style of weapon you're using, and finally Slice. Fury is a channeled buffing basic that deals less damage than the next ability in your action bar, but buffs your crit chance by 10% when cancelled out. By cancelling out, I mean using an ability as fast as you can after activating Fury, which means you'll land a total of 2 out of the 3 hits. You do this because the ability is rather weak and you're only really using it to cycle through your basics due to its short cooldown. Now Dismember, unlike Combust and Fragmentation Shot for the other styles, is a bleed that is not boosted by walking your enemy. You can however still boost it using the Lunging Perk. Now if you want to get more damage out of your melee basic abilities, you can simply switch to a two-handed weapon just for one ability being Cleave, and then switch back to the dual wield equivalents being Decimate. As for filling in the rest of your melee action bar, melee is a bit unique or different to ranged and magic. Your threshold should be Assault, then Destroy or Hurricane, and then Flurry or Quake, again depending on dual wield or two-handed weapons. Melee's ultimate ability is Berserk, which is far stronger than Sunshine or Death Swiftness, however it is shorter and causes you to take 50% more damage throughout its duration. Now, Melee does have other useful thresholds like Blood Tendrils and Slaughter, but you want to be using these outside of your Berserk as Bleeds are not boosted by Berserk's damage buff. Slaughter is a Bleed that benefits from your target moving for additional damage as well, by the way. Now, if you have Greater Flurry or Greater Fury, they're still going to be in the exact same spot on your action bar and ability order. If you want to watch a video covering those abilities, be sure to check out the one linked in the description below. Now, something cool worth mentioning about Hurricane and Destroy is that if you're using the dual wield Dark Eye Shard and Dark Eye Sliver weapons, or the 295 Ling versions of these, you're able to use Hurricane with dual wield weapons, and it also removes the shared cooldown between Hurricane and Destroy, which will allow you to use both in consecutive order when using dual wield weapons. Now that we've covered all the basics, it's time to get into a full damage rotation. In case you struggle to keep your combat action continuous, please turn on Revolution Combat Mode in your settings under Combat, and then go to Action Bar, and then go to Combat Mode. Alright, the general consensus of a damage rotation is to use your basic abilities to build to 100% Adrenaline. At 100% Adrenaline, you want to use your ultimate ability for that damage buff. You then start building Adrenaline to use your thresholds, and once used, thresholds will drain your Adrenaline, so in between those thresholds, you want to be using basic abilities as well. In a General Sunshine rotation, you'll be able to use anywhere from 3 to 6 thresholds depending on what items you've unlocked. The items I'm talking about are the Ring of Vigor, Planted Feet Switch, and the Adrenaline Potion. The Ring of Vigor and Planted Feet Switch are used before your ultimate ability, as the Ring of Vigor increases your Adrenaline by 10% after using an ultimate ability, and the Planted Feet Switch extends your Sunshine or Dust Swiftness by 7.8 seconds. The Adrenaline Potion will allow you to regain 25% Adrenaline instantly by sipping it, which is incredibly useful after using your ultimate ability to get to those thresholds much more quickly. I suggest keep binding the four things on screen to make it much smoother to rotate through. Melee is exactly Exactly the same thing, except you don't have a planted feet switch from melee, so you want to use your Ring of Vigor, then use Berserk, sip the Adrenaline Potion, and pop off those thresholds while using basics to build to those thresholds in between. 
Now, since Berserker only lasts 20 seconds, you will not be able to get off as many thresholds as ranged or magic in your ultimate rotation. By following the logical ability orders mentioned in this video, you'll be able to deal out a considerable amount of damage without getting into the complexities of more advanced rotations using various switches and special weapon attacks. Here's a list of some other tips you could use to your advantage in increasing your damage. Now, please be aware that this video doesn't cover everything, and I do have other videos and other combat related topics you may want to watch. These, of course, will be linked in the description below. With that being said though, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one.